This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 56, The Last Hurrah. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest video podcast. I'm John Miller. Uh, before we start this week, I just want to just once again, once again, say thank you to everyone for voting in this year's uh, podcast awards. I'm taping this Tuesday, and so the results from the competition will be released tomorrow. Uh, obviously, I release the podcast every Wednesday, so I have to do it before Wednesday to get it out on Wednesday, so I have no idea of the results as I'm recording this, but uh, it doesn't matter. I want to thank everyone for voting and supporting the show and supporting all of your other favorite podcasters. It really is important, and oh, millions of you guys <laughs> voted, so I really appreciate that. Uh, it, really, it really shows a lot of support because podcasting it's definitely a passion. Very few people are making a living at it. Most of, most of all, we just do this because we enjoy doing it. So really, really appreciate your support. All right, so this week, we're gonna be kind of starting to close out the whole expedition. Um, it really is coming, the 2003 trip's coming to an end, and there's only a few more episodes left from this, this expedition, but uh, never fear, the rest of Everest will continue. So uh, enough of that, let's get back up to base camp. Here we go. All right, you can tell that an Everest expedition is coming to an end (laughs) when people are shaving. This is our good friend Richard Dugan uh, from the Northern Ireland team. And you'll you'll hear someone in the background kind of taunting him. That's his climbing partner and good friend Benjo, Benjo Bannon, and. uh, Benjo was a great guy, is a great guy, but uh, not always the easiest to understand what the fellow was saying because to me he had a quite uh, thick Irish accent and it was difficult always to totally understand what he was saying <laughs> even though he's speaking English. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he already yeah. looked different. Wow. Yeah. That's the we joked uh, when we saw it. Richard's passport photo that he had given to that cook uh, episodes, episodes, episodes ago. And he looks so different without a beard. He really did. Good, Richie boy. These people at Red Rock not know you know, eh? What is Banjo saying? I have no idea. That CSU one. My favorite is the, the Miss Kitty mirror. The what? The little kitty. I'm, oh, oh, I'm, I didn't I'm, even I'm able that. to get it in the shot. Hey, too, so he doesn't even know what he's holding me, son. I think we have borrowed that he's Hello Kitty now, mirror fella. from <laughs> the Russians. <Some> kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> All the acts are not knowing you now, fella. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is Banjo going on about? Who knows? <laughs> Oh, you go over to Fina and trant and all them girls finally you going, Oh, what a kitty. They're using my um my electric razor there. Uh, I think I was the only one who thought about rain one. And uh, they all were you, dying um, to get rid of their beards. You go, uh, at the end. Everyone wanted to shave and so I loaned it. <laughs> I loaned it out to a b- whole bunch of people. <laughs> Alright, so this is later in the uh, late afternoon. This is dinner, and uh, that's Pempa, or one of uh, the kitchen guys, actually Dawa's assistant, and, and uh, <laughs> that was us having dinner, getting ready, just a quick shot of that soup. We had soup every night, um, but it was getting getting us ready to go to this little, this, this is the last hurrah. This is at the Northern, or excuse me, what am I talking about? This is at the Royal Navy Royal Marines camp. This is their last 
party. Cool. We were all like Tin Man. You have a pizza, have you? He had no rocks out there. That was on the Manchester Street, wasn't it? It was over a minute. Come, come down, you know. We're staring at your oxygen. My neck seized up. So the whole time, just. Anytime we were looking at it, it If I had been carrying oxygen, I wouldn't have had a big rocks either. Yeah. Because there'd be nothing else in it. I know. You just can't. Uh huh. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> It was tough. <laughs> but, yo, I know. I saw him there. It's too much. It's funny looking at this footage because <laughs> you know these guys all knew me, obviously. There's Frankie, and Richard there. Everyone knew me, and I knew everyone, but no one really knew Ben because Ben had been up at Advanced Base Camp most of the time and didn't really spend any, any time with these guys. So he was meeting them, most of them, for the first time. Uh, there's some French climb. There's a French climber, and there's Bertrand from our team. And so you know, it was kind of funny because these guys were kind of like a second or third or fourth family to me. I had several second families uh, at base camp, and it was funny to think that after two months on the same mountain, that uh, Ben didn't know them. There's Denis in the hat there, and um, he. As, as memory serves, he drank quite a bit I'm, I'm during this party. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, there's yeah. been meetings with D. Denis drank quite a bit um, at this party and got more and more rowdy. Well, you don't get rowdy with the Royal Navy and Royal Marines. As I remember, they ended up push, or throwing him out of the tent <laughs> at that door, just fully, um, uh, with affection, but... Uh, they threw him out on his head. I, I kind of remember him being upside down, being carried out upside down with his feet straight up in the air. I did have to edit some of this footage because uh, it reminds me of an episode of the television show MASH where they, they do some episode where it, it's filmed as if it's a documentary and uh, it's all black and white. And before it starts, you hear this voiceover. Some of their saltier comments have been deleted. Well, that certainly holds true for the, some of this footage. <laughs> what nice decorations they had, all those glow sticks. That was so cool. So this party was... This was a way to just sort of decompress a little bit. They had had um, a successful summit. They got one of their climbers. Obviously, um, climbing Everest is a team effort in most cases, and so they were there to support to get someone up uh, onto the summit, and they did that. They did so. Um, one of their climbers, Dave, who was speaking with uh, uh, Denis earlier, um, made it to the summit, and. Uh, then they had sort of like an award ceremony where they recognized all of their Sherpas and, um, you know, recognized all the people who had helped out with their expedition and gave everyone katas, those silk scarves. And it was just a really nice evening. Um, I didn't film all of it because uh, I was part of it. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And everyone got... Uh, Fairly drunk that night. Three weeks earlier. Oh, really? Yeah. So, you know, pretty much in the same boat. And, uh, I was saying, saying to Rich the other day, like, oh, this morning, sorry, you know, I said, uh, people like to me, you put their hand in your heart and lift it out. You're so lost, you know. And uh, especially for me, I, I felt like I was useless and selfish to be out here yeah. to climb the mountain and stuff like that, you know. And it's something I really wanted, you know what I mean? I, I still feel that part of me is lost. And uh, when I found out that night, I walked out of this tent, I seen a, a, a shooting star over the mountain. So I'm going to have a big star tied on my neck, back of my neck. Because I, I believe that. I I believe that I, I've lost something and I want to remember that something. So I'm going to have a tattooed on the back of my neck, a shooting star. Just because just it's for me, not, not for anybody else, just personal. That, you know, I, I thought I lost something, so I'm going to have it tattooed on my neck. <laughs> All right. Obviously, uh, Swifty had been drinking quite a bit. <laughs> so that was uh, a very heartfelt conversation, but I don't think uh, uh, Ben nor I knew exactly what he was talking about. But... Uh, 
what a great guy, anyway. All right, so this is some time-lapse footage that I took, and this footage is very important to me. Um, I took this footage specifically for myself because this, is, this was part of my daily routine while at Everest for two months. What you can see there is you can see the, um, the shadow of, uh, and, and the line of the sun. So as this is early morning <coughs> as the sun is coming up and you can see how the shadow slowly retreats and uh, the sun covers, covers up base camp. And it was always freezing in that shadow in the early morning. And as soon as you'd walk into the sun, you'd suddenly be warm. And so every morning I'd get up and I'd watch and I'd look out and I'd either walk out into the sun on the other side of base camp looking for trilobites or fossils um, of, because this was all under an ocean at some point and there's fossils everywhere. I never found one, but I just kind of entertain myself and try to warm up in the morning by walking around uh, looking through all of these rocks, um, just trying to find, trying to f at least p pick out a trilobite. I wanted to at least see one because people had them left and right, and I just wanted to see one. I wanted to see one for myself, um, and I never did. But so anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of getting these shots, and then I speed the footage up, and you can see the you can see the sun. Here it goes. There you go. Um, yeah, so every morning I'd go out there and I'd, I'd try to get warmed up. And so watching this line advance across base camp was just part of the experience, was part of my Everest experience. And it was a very personal thing. I was always by myself. And uh, I'd take this time to really, you know, think about my wife and my family and everything. And it was just, it meant a lot to me. Um, to get some of this footage, so I wanted to share all of this with you, you guys. I, I know I've, I've shown some of this footage, but it hasn't been sped up. I've shown some of the footage at the very beginning of past episodes, but uh, it was it was the daily wait for that sun to come up and uh, breathe, you know, warmth into your body because it was always so cold there, even at base camp. I can't imagine spending as much time up at uh, advanced base, base camp or higher as. Uh, you know, Lakba did, and Lawong, and Ben, and Pasong, <laughs> all those guys. I think this shot here is my mother's favorite shot from the entire uh, expedition. She loves seeing that sunburst come up over that ridge. Of course, of course my wife's favorite shot was every shot in the film. <laughs> She's probably my biggest fan. You can hear in the background more yak bells because the yaks were, the trains of yaks were coming down as, as people were starting to uh, evacuate uh, advanced base camp. That's a... I think at this time, Lawong and Lakpa were still up high uh, at advanced base camp, just tidying up and getting everything packed up onto yaks and then uh, having it come down. I'm not sure whether they were quite back yet or not. They might have arrived this day. Now I'm standing up on the mound overlooking our base camp with my back to the mountain. And you can see that the shadow of the ridge to our right is almost gone. We're almost bathed in full sunlight at this point. see it slowly bleed away. Oh, and there I go. <laughs> that was me walking into the frame there. I was going into the uh, cook tent because at this point in the expedition I was spending all of my time with Dawa. Uh, Dawa. Dawa and I were had grown extremely close by this point and so in the mornings um, I was not allowing him to serve me food at the, anymore. I was trying my best just to be one of the guys and uh, serve myself food and clean up my own uh, dishes and whatnot. Not always successful, <laughs> but uh, I was spending my mornings uh, hanging out with the Sherpas, which was probably one of the best times of my life. You can see all the activity in 
here I come to shut the camera off. So in, inside of that cook tent is going to be the, the topic of next week's episode. Um, I filmed a lot of, of their daily activities and I'm really excited to show that to everyone because the Sherpa are much more than just climbers. Not every Sherpa at Everest is climbing and you need to have, you need people to cook and to do all that and these guys don't get any of the glory, you know, and they really are the, the reason that you can summit Everest. So few people summit Everest without any Sherpa support whatsoever. Most people who do summit without Sherpa support have Sherpa support at base camp to cook. And it's the food, it's the calories, it's the taking care of you that makes the summit possible. So there's going to be a whole episode next week just to see what these guys do. And when you watch it, I'm going to remind you next week, watch it knowing that this is the last day or second to last day that we were there. And I want you to see just how careful they are, how conscientious they are, and how much they care about what they're doing even at the end of the expedition absolutely amazing stuff so join us next week and again thanks everyone for voting i really appreciate it if any of you are going to be in ontario at the podcast uh, and new media expo um you know at the end of september let me know shoot me an email i'd love to see you there say hi and thank you for your support so all right everyone we will talk with you next week the rest of everest is downloaded all over the world every week if you enjoy watching and would like to show your support then take a look at my website Aside from having lots of additional blog entries from the expedition updated every week, there's this little donation button on every page. Now, many of you have pressed that button and your generous contributions are helping to cover my hosting fees. If you haven't donated but would like to, then just contribute any amount. In return, I'll give you access to the video and audio dispatches I sent out while we were actually at Everest. It's pretty interesting stuff. Contribute $25 or more and I'll even throw in an iPod compatible version of the film Everest The Other Side. That's the project the entire podcast here is based on. As always, our announcer is Marlon May and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. Thanks so much everyone and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com. <laughs>